People just see the word gay and they expect you to have a shaved head and be really bulky. And it's just like, what era do you live in? You're too pretty to be a rugby player. You're too pretty to be gay. You could vote whether you wanted to kneel or if you didn't, but the majority of the girls said, yeah, we want to kneel. We want to show like, our respect towards the Black Lives Matter movement. If I can inspire the young girls that are coming through to play the sport, if I can do that, then my job's done. Celia, thank you for welcoming us to your Wasp FC training ground. Um, quite like it down here. It used to get talked about as a bit spitting sawdust in the old days. But know, it's quite yeah. nice, isn't it? No, it's quite nice. Yeah, no, it's good. We oh, love really. it here. Sun's always out, kind of. <laughs> Obviously, what you do is physically taxing, but the last 12 months have been incredibly psychologically taxing um, for you guys and some people just glide through it don't they and they're the lucky ones and that's great but in terms of your support network um, you are your so your girlfriend is Megan Jones who plays with you in the sevens team so your support network is also someone you basically compete against at work in a sense so is it did it ever get a bit intense where you're like you know or is it actually so helpful the whole time or is it like I work with you I rely on you you support me and vice versa uh, actually, we just need a night of no talking, please, and stick Netflix on. <laughs> Do you know what? Like, if people ask this, and it's so funny because I know it's not for everyone, but we actually work really well together, and it, we, it's all we've ever known. We we yeah. met in the program um, properly, so I think like for us, it just works. Um, we're quite different as well. She's very hyperactive and like energetic. She's the energizer in the team, whereas I'm a bit more chilled. I just sort of go about my business a bit quiet more quietly and like it just yeah we balance each other out but yeah there's definitely been times where we've been getting on each other's nerves we spent the whole of lockdown together and that was our first experience of living together then after Pretty that um, yeah, yeah after that we moved in together as well so lockdown was a success for us but then obviously going back into the program we were training at wasps together then training in sevens together so yeah we we do literally do everything together so it is a lot but it, it works for us it works for you um from the outside and the outside what i mean is i'm not in your team i'm also a straight white man so actually they are privileges in themselves in that it, I've never even considered my sexuality being an issue in a room. I've never considered my the colour of my skin to be an issue in a room ever. So they are privileges in themselves. So these could be and probably are lazy presumptions for me. But have you had a cruisy journey through? Has there ever been a problem with any of that? Yeah, I think it's a difficult one. Personally, I've been really fortunate in all my experiences with it. Um, I did athletics before so in athletics it it's not very normalized being gay and is it not no. no it's not um and it's very different coming into rugby and i wasn't out when i first started playing rugby when i was 21 so um you already knew you just hadn't told anyone no Were you on the fence no uh, yeah i guess yeah i it wasn't really until i came into rugby that i was like oh okay maybe i am gay and i was like but even so at the point i was like oh like I don't know whether I'm gay or whether I just, whether this is just like a phase or like, it was weird, it was weird, but I'd never really thought about it when I was in athletics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it hasn't been an issue for me, but I know there's so many people that it has been and it's, it's such, it is a big thing. Um, it's a big thing for so many people and their families and things like that. Um, but yeah, I've been really fortunate um, that I haven't, I haven't struggled with it. Um, there's so much, especially with social media and in the media and yeah. things like that. I think definitely for women in rugby, it's a lot easier to be an out woman. But as men, I think it, it's a whole different ball game. And I think that's something that like, yeah. we could speak about forever. But yeah, for women, I think it's definitely easier. Growing up and playing rugby and talking, playing alongside, you know, for years we played alongside women's teams at Bath and Saracens and I was there and all that and still mate to some of those girls now and whatever. But the 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 running theme, the running joke, and it was a joke, was that rugby often it has a re women's rugby has a reputation of turning yeah, women, of yeah. turning them, and actually it that was that had negative connotations. I don't know why it doesn't now, yeah. uh, but it was almost seen as a negative. Well, they were straight when they went in, and, and now they're not. Yeah, you still Is that hear something, it now. Do you still hear it now? Yeah, yeah, you do. You still hear it now. And it's funny and people are like, well, what is it about rugby? And it's like, I don't think it is. I think it's just accepted. And I think people come yeah. in, into the environment and they know it's accepted. So people can feel like they can be themselves, which I think should be celebrated. It shouldn't be seen as yeah. a negative thing, but I think it still is 
in, in some ways and you get the you still get the standard comments like oh like you're too pretty to be a rugby player you're too pretty to be gay or like they they will just see the word gay and they expect you to have a shaved head and yeah be really bulky and it's just like what era do you live in like it's yeah. just crazy but it yeah. still happens there clearly has been progress in that sense and in lots of senses societally which we'll talk about in a minute but there's a way to go do you still feel like in in that sense in terms of people's sexuality there's a way to go it may never be gone because there will always be nasty people about and silly people but do you feel like it will be far more gone than it is now i think we're definitely on the right path i do think there's still like a long way to go with it and like i said in rugby it's, it's very different to a lot of other sports um and also here like in the uk it's very accepted whereas I mean, in other countries, it's, people were still being tortured for being gay. So like, yeah. in that sense, you're like, yes, there's a massive way to go. But I think, yes, yeah, especially for athletics and, and things like that, like, I would love to see it more like openly accepted. And I don't know whether it's not accepted. It's just, I don't think people feel as comfortable coming out in, I can only speak of athletics because I was in it, but and I'm sure it's the same in other sports. So I would love for it to be like it is in rugby in other sports. And I'm not uh, not nervous to ask you uh, politically, but I'm nervous to ask you because I reckon you probably get asked it all the time and you might get really bored of it. But quite topical at the moment is the taking of the knee by elite, by visible athletes effectively. So elite pro sports types taking the knee before games and matches and races and that kind of thing. And there's quite a lot of controversy around it. And where do you stand on it? Do you do it? And also, how do you feel when you see people booing it, which has happened recently at football matches? It, it seems, clearly it seems crazy to you because your, your eyes roll. It seems crazy to me, but where do you stand or kneel on it? Yeah. Um, so we actually had a conversation when I first moved to Wasps last season. Um, they'd already had a lot of conversations on it um, and deciding whether we wanted to do it and how people felt about it. And they did an anonymous um, like poll on it. And basically you could vote whether you wanted to kneel or if you didn't. And obviously if there were people that were really like against it, then we would have to come to some sort of agreement. But the majority of the girls said, yeah, we want to kneel. We want to show like, our respect um, towards Black Lives Matter movement. And for me, I just think, why not? Like, why Why wouldn't you? Um, if you can show your respects and sort of acknowledge it and show, sort of symbolise that actually, yes, rugby against racism, we're all in this together. I just don't understand why you wouldn't, why you wouldn't do that really. You might end up being actually a spokesperson, whether you want to be or not. You know, do you feel like you kind of have to be a spokesperson, whether you like it or not? Yeah, I think it, it is that. Like, I do have a responsibility and I'm happy to, to, to educate and do things like that. I am happy to do it, but when it's constant, it is a little bit like, okay, like I can't be the only one here that, yeah. that's doing this. So I just want to be that sort of, that person like, that that rep represents, I guess, black and BME, BAME um, women in sport. And like, if I can do that, if I can inspire the young girls that are coming through to play the sport, because especially in rugby, young girls didn't have a black woman yeah. to look up to, especially in rugby. I was lucky doing athletics. I had loads of black athletes to look up to. Jess Ennis, um, Dame Kelly Holmes, like they were the people that I always looked up to as, as I was growing up. Um, but I don't think, yeah, Maggie Alfonsi, I think she was the only black female rugby player at yeah. the time. So I think now, hopefully we'll see see people coming through and yeah, if I can do that, then my job's done. Yeah, and the whole, if I can see it, I can be it thing. Yeah. That is something that is, it's really, really easy to say, it's definitely true, or really easy to say, oh, it's a load of rubbish, but actually it's, it's individual experiences, isn't it? And I, I, you know, commentate on these amazing games at World Cups and these games on TV all the time. My little girls never, ever, ever watch anything I do. But if there are women playing, they are watching. Up to Kildan. Kildan finds a way past Higgins. Kwanzaa waiting out wide. Kwanzaa is going to go. The former hipped athlete has got plenty of pace. Let's off the handbrake and strolls downhill for even second try. Yeah, I, I actually, we played the semi-final the other day against Quinns and after the game, um, 
one of the parents came over to me and were like, oh, um, my little girl's over here, like, could we, could we get a picture? I was like, yeah, of course, went over and it was a little mixed race girl. And I was like, this is just like why I want to do this, this because yeah. this, this is literally it. Like, I just want to inspire little kids like you. And like, they were like, thank you so much. I was like, no, thank you. Like, this is, it's so nice to see. So they were like, she wants to be just like you when she grows up. And I was like, okay, you've just made my it's year. So yeah, it's all yeah, done. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's working. Do you think the women's game is going, obviously the, the final with, Queens and Sarri's got a lot of attention. It was on the telly and a really good game, which helped and a couple of great performances from individual players. But do you feel like the, the women's game is going the right way? Do you like where you see it going? Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it deserves it, I think. Like there's been so many, so many um, women's rugby players before us that have worked so hard and have yeah. done all of this without any money and without really probably expecting to ever be paid for it. But they sort of, have like carved the path for us. And now we're at a point where we're doing that for the next generation. And I think it's like women's um, women's football. Like if you look at that now, I think we're probably what, 10 years behind them. So if you look at where they are now, hopefully in another 10 years, the Prem will be professional, we'll be training as full-time athletes. Yeah. And it's definitely going in the right direction. And it is getting a bit more recognition like with, with the broadcasting and the media and things like that, which I think is probably the biggest way you're going to grow it. If you can't watch it on the telly, you're never going to come down to a, a game, are you? So yeah. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. It's been absolutely lovely to talk to you. No, really, really, really good fun. Me. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. No, thank you. Very good performance. <laughs> <laughs>